Manchester, then we don't have to force them, okay? Thank you, gentlemen. Because it is very easy to be swayed by Satrio because he knows a lot about Srebrenica. He talks a lot about human dignity is more important than Jokowi and Germany. But let's take this step back for a moment and ask ourselves. First, whether testifying is in court is a right or a responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. Second of all, whether information will be available if journalists are forced to have on their source of information, right, ladies and gentlemen. And first of all, uh, before moving to those questions, let me first of all give clarification. If we can have the information, even if it's anonymous information, ladies and gentlemen, we can then ask our investigators, ladies and gentlemen, to come down to the counties to check in by the name of ICC, then we can know which areas are specifically most vulnerable for the government's attack. We can know which areas are specifically have a lot of information, ladies and gentlemen, and we can contact it first before asking the information. Because under their model, we ask the information first, ladies and gentlemen, and the societies don't know whether their information is, going, is the one that is going to bring to the to be brought to the court or not. But the societies will always have the paranoia that this information might be uh, might bring me down to their heart, which can uh, which can oh, which might mean an open opposition, which is very uh, which is a very dangerous status to be in that family, ladies and gentlemen. So let's talk about the right of the, whether testifying in court is the right or the responsibility. Yes, we agree that journalists are human beings and human beings is job of states in general. And journalists do think that have the right to protect their job in this and sometimes their uh, their leader of the redaction of a specifically obliges them to respect their sources because later if they don't respect the sources, the permitted redaction can be brought to the court in this general because it's against the code of journalism in this general. And that is what we think that children who are raped, uh, who are raped systematically raped by the government forces have the right to not testify in court because it's uh, because it's apparently so much cost, too costly for them to handle, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we think that the same cost should also not thank you, should also be applied to journalists. Now let's talk about the second clash. Whether information will be available if journalists are forced to write on this uh, source of information. One thing that we must be clear, we cannot assess the credibility of information that does not exist, okay? What's most important is that the information is at least available. Because okay. information is, if it's not available, then we cannot assess the credibility. Then we don't have anything to start our investigations, to start our due process, ladies and gentlemen. We said with their, their proposal, the information, the affinity is systematically kept away from the court, uh, from the court ladies and gentlemen, and we need to be ready Realistic with the current condition. We don't have to be idealistic as a human being just for the sake of as a human being, ladies and gentlemen. We've analyzed three actors as sources of information. The first is the society, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about Libyan societies who are always afraid that the government is happily spying on their activities, ladies and gentlemen. Every time we see an interview with Libyan citizens or with Syria citizens, ladies and gentlemen, in times the information will always be anonymous. That's how afraid they are the government knowing that they are the open opposition, ladies and gentlemen. And we need the societies to be able to sort out their condition, ladies and gentlemen. We think that their proposal, societies will always be afraid of foreign journalists, ladies and gentlemen. They won't talk to foreign journalists at all because they'll be afraid the government will immediately inflate their homes, ladies and gentlemen, once ICC use the name of the societies who testify against the government. And before the ICC can to bring, uh, before I think we can bring these societies to the same heaven of their heart, which they claim to be so affected, ladies and gentlemen. The societies will always think, will talking to these journalists can bring me to international criminal court, ladies and gentlemen? And now let's talk about the second touch, which they haven't responded, the government. At least in the status quo, the negative thing is defending. The oppressive government still allows foreign journalists to be in the country, ladies and gentlemen. With their proposal, the oppressive government will always see the existence of foreign journalists can be can directly take me to international criminal court because right now the foreign journalists will always be forced to testify in court and use the name and it, the, the government will think that it will that be that much credible and there will be as a result they will be more hostile to foreign journalists. We don't want every country to be to, to turn out to be as hostile as me. 
we are now. Or North Korea, because we don't have any information about the actual conditions that is happening there. And that's with right. anonymous information, we know whether what police is informed with the systematic way. We know where the children are used by as the soldiers, by the government and the government. But we know at least where to start our investigation. Is it the police force? Is it the military? Is it the government official? Is it the government? Is it the ladies and gentlemen? And whether we can and whether we can use female judge or all of those kinds of stuff, then we can go and confirm by bringing our investigators back but first ensuring their safety because with our proposal we can ask the we ask the ICC to protect them first before the government can know that they are on my proposition. Wait a second. Because we're talking about countries where people who are openly opposing the government have their wives raped in front of public right? we open opposition will always have the children mutilated in front of public. We say the status quo have at least helps the closer to opposition, ladies and gentlemen, which would later will be explained after I <laughs> In many cases, for example, when Slobodan and Milosevic fall down, the government already changes. What they have a problem is timeline problem. The fight already is over. In most cases, ladies and gentlemen, right now, if the government hasn't even crumbled down, because if the if the, gov the oppressive government has already crumbled down, then we don't have to be afraid of the then we don't have to force the journalists to testify in the court because the journalists will already have the guts to speak in the court because the government does not have the ability to be oppressive anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, and anyway, it's incredibly new to be brought back to the third speaker's POI, ladies and gentlemen, and not speech, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's talk about the clustered oppositions that will talk, that will try to protect for, for in the status quo. Right now, they can at least speak out about what conditions are they facing due to the government's forces. They can be exposed to, uh, because they can be exposed to foreign sympathy, ladies and gentlemen, and the foreign world can it help empower them without the government knowing who to punish, ladies and gentlemen, because under their proposal, the government already knows who to punish, and the society will not be as part of, will not, will be very positive, therefore societies will, the international societies will not have any awareness to empower them, ladies and gentlemen. So, for the sake of being realistic, if we want to help real people, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to side with the opposition. Thank you. Here, here.